Hey, hey Ron, you want to give us a, a young clap? Hello, hello. Let me loco. I can't do no small talk. No, no small talk. I'm not with the small talk. Can't be with the small talk. What's up, Five Nation? Welcome to yet another unscripted episode with myself, Aaron Masamola. Now, today I'm joined by an award-winning content creator. He's also a radio and TV personality. Some of you might know him as Mr. Homework or Give Your Girl a Money, but <laughs> the famous words are definitely the brand Lemmy Loco. My brother, how are Bro, you doing today? Uh, what an intro, man. <laughs> What an intro. Yeah, yeah. I'm good, bro. And yourself? Oh, man, I'm blessed, dude. Like, yeah. listen, I, I have to start here, Yeah. right? I told a few of my friends, family, yeah. that I'll be chatting to you today. Yeah. And my sister had one question yeah. that she wanted to, to just get across oh, to you. Oh, man. Right? <laughs> so this question is not my own. Yeah. I'm asking this question yeah. for all the ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the ring on your finger Yo. the man is off the market <laughs> yeah man mr yeah, man. give your gala money yeah 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 you're yeah. taken That's, it's been a it's been an amazing experience i must say yeah uh you know the whole nerves of making it official and all of that um but the relationship itself it feels like second nature well yeah. you never get you never get comfortable uh you never get to a point where you need to be or you're too comfortable rather but uh yeah man it was uh it was official. It was official. Uh, I'm excited. My wife is excited. It feels <laughs> weird seeing my wife. You know? I know. It's, it's now you have to drop the girlfriend. Yeah. When you introduce her, you have yeah, to be like, hey, hey, my, my wife. wife. My yeah, wife. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy, man. It, it came with a lot of controversy. Yeah. Funny enough. But um, I was chilled, man. You know, I've always been transparent with my wife and always will be. So we weren't really phased by it because she knows... She knows me in and out. Yeah. She's got access to everything she needs to have access to. <laughs> so I wasn't really faced. But yeah, um, it just, just reminds you that, you know, no matter how beautiful of a thing you might be doing, mm. you must always expect a little bumps, like some bumps along the road. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was just that. I mean, I felt more for my wife more than anything else, you know, because she's not somebody who's in the spotlight. I'm used mm. to those things. I've trended for way less than that mm -hmm. you know so i was like it was more for my wife more than anything else uh that i felt for but uh, we got through it like a day later we yeah. somebody else was trending that's social media for you exactly yeah yeah, yeah. you talk about social media and yeah. i would love to shine a spotlight on a beautiful reel that yeah. is on your personal instagram page yeah. that's the that that's the scene that shows you and your wife with friends and family yeah. coming together yeah. to to celebrate the union. Yeah. Now the caption is something that caught me by surprise. Yeah. It says a kept promise. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that promise because I'm sure there's a story <laughs> to tell. You like you touched it on the. It definitely is. Yeah. It definitely is. So um, I've been with my wife for four years, now, mm. and which was long before the social media stuff, right? But. In all honesty, and I mean, we look back and we laugh about it now, but we didn't have the healthiest relationship, you know. Um, we were definitely toxic to each other. And even though I was very intentional in the very beginning, and, you know, I, I joked about it mm. in the beginning of the relationship. I'm like, ah, yeah, I'm going to marry you, you, you know. <laughs> so looking back when we were going through this process of actually getting married, um, we... we you you have a look back at those kind of conversations. You're like, actually, you actually did keep your promise, you know. So I think that's where the caption, because she actually posted the reel and mm. just collabed with me. So her, the caption is actually hers, oh. you know. So it, it, it definitely speaks a lot of how we've grown. Mm. You look back when you get married. You don't get married because, ah, now we can't afford it or ah, there's pressure from the family, whatever the reason is. You you. We got married because we felt like we've grown so much over the years and it felt like the right thing to do first and foremost and because we both wanted it. You know, a lot of the times you get gents like, ah, I actually yeah. didn't want it. She was pressuring <laughs> me, the family or whatever it is, yeah. you know. So we both actually wanted it and we actually had been talking about it for like since a year back. Uh, but finally we, we, we got to do it. So the story is just like how we grew 
together and how we never actually at some point never saw ourselves getting married to each other wow you know so yeah. and growing out of that and learning and unlearning and that healing process it's it's what i think any healthy relationship eventually goes through to become healthier mm. yeah now you call yourself the self-proclaimed mjolo expert yeah, yeah like yeah, the yeah. the modern day love doctor yeah. <laughs> let's call it that 100%. looking back at 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 your journey yeah. like starting yeah, the yeah. journey and the relationship with your wife yeah. what advice would you give to yourself um well done <laughs> first and <laughs> foremost you know because not well done because i eventually got married but well done for overcoming things that i never thought i'd be capable of overcoming mm. uh forgiving things that i never thought i'd ever forgive uh not only to my partner but to myself as well you know so advice would be be more patient mm. you know if i would if i were to speak to lemmy 4 years ago i'd be like be more patient because patience is like i feel like the root of every healthy outcome you know be it a career be it a relationship with a spouse be it a relationship with a family member sometimes patience is needed more than um actual healing you know so i think advice i'd give to myself is be more patient definitely absolutely beautiful yeah. let's get back to to the work that you do yeah, yeah. on on a day to day basis but yeah. also taking it way back to to the beginning <laughs> you know lockdown is a time that so many of us absolutely yeah. hated yeah. but for you lockdown was almost like the catalyst yeah. to your success yeah. that's when you posted several videos yeah. that went viral yeah, yeah. um some would say take us back to that first video and also oh. the mindset in lockdown to yeah. say I actually want to do this. You know, it, it's that's not actually how it happened, you mm. know. So first and foremost, I've been a content creator since 2015. Whoa. And a lot of people don't know that. You know, I've been making funny videos or funny skits rather since 2015 when I left my 9 to 5 because I used to work for an insurance company in the call center there you know every day good morning welcome to so you were that annoying guy yeah, calling yeah, yeah. us in the morning no 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 I was receiving calls fortunately oh, okay. I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't the guy waking people <laughs> up you know so I left my job and and because what I initially left my job for was to become a DJ you okay. know So because I had so much time in my hands during the week cuz you only DJ on weekends at mm. night. So during the day during the week I had so much time and I bumped into a, an app called Vine. And then I was like, "Oh, this is amazing. You know, I actually want to do this." Mm. And that's when I started making content. And fast forward to lockdown, everything was going bad for everyone. Um so at the time I actually cuz I was a club manager at the time. So I'd, there's nothing happening gigs on happening we're all in our houses and i actually remember tweeting saying you know maybe during this lockdown um not even maybe i if if i remember the tweet correctly i said um what i want to do during this lockdown is actually tap in more into my content creator side hmm. and collaborate with more uh content creators because what i then was doing i just started a podcast but like for DJs and stuff and when i bumped into tiktok i was like you know actually i want to tap into that more i want to give myself more time to make more content go back to the funny skits and stuff mm-hmm. not realizing that that was actually my manifestation yep. because speaking it into existence yeah, almost like yeah. literally 2 months later my first relationship advice video goes viral mm. you know but it was a dark time i won't lie man at, at that time i'm sitting i'm out of a job um i don't know i was actually job hunting as i was i was in between submitting CVs when I made the first video and I remember asking my mom for like 600 bucks cuz I was down and out and you know I literally needed that 600 bucks for Wi-Fi I was like you know instead of buying data and whatever I'm going to subscribe to like a fiber line and get it installed so it could make the job hunting easier Kanti I'm subscribing to make more content yes. you know what I mean? I'm getting <laughs> the Wi-Fi to make more content so it was a very dark time it really was a dark time because what it also did is that um i'd lost my dad 2 years prior to that and we were super close you know it forced me to confront that because mm-hmm. because i'd lost my dad and i wasn't at home when he passed on i had to drive back from a different province and everything was just moving so fast um trying to get a job and survive after that i never got time to grieve so when lockdown happened 
it shot me straight into that. You had to face it. I had to face mm. it. So it was it was a really dark time and I'm unemployed. Nothing is coming right. So I'm thinking I need to go back to corporate, you know. But, um, you know, what they say, there's always silver lining, man. Definitely. Yeah, and that was the silver lining. And what does your mom say about your journey now? Because I know coming from a, yeah. a black household, you know, <laughs> you're trying to explain the concept of DJing, yeah, the yeah. concept of being yeah. a content creator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they don't fully understand it. But now when they see the successes, yeah. it's absolutely amazing. But I'm sure there were some tough conversations in the no, beginning. not really, man. Not really. So, so funny enough, I was raised by my dad. My parents are separated. So I was raised by a single father. But even when they were together, they knew I was very much into music and art. My mom actually signed me up to a casting agency. It was her idea when I was in primary school, you know. So I went to uh, training for presenting and acting and all of that. So I started this way young. And when they separated, my dad, well, before they separated, separated my dad would take me to auditions and stuff. You know, so they were very involved and like they kind of knew like this is what he likes and whatever. Mm. And this was all in primary school. So when the social media thing started, I don't think they were surprised at all, you know. But what did surprise my mom is when she started getting calls like, hey, <laughs> this guy is on every WhatsApp status, every, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So is this, is this your son? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. So they were chilled with it, man. There weren't any tough conversations. They understood. But obviously there's those pressures of um, when I left my job to become a DJ, mm -hmm. they were worried, you know, like any parent would be worried about, okay, so what are you going to do now? Like, how are you going to make an income? Uh, how are you going to support your kid? Because I just had my son at the time. You know, so it was a bit of a gamble, but I was like, yeah. you know, I always just try to believe in trusting the process, man. Oh, absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Tell us about the the name Lemmy B. Nkosi, <laughs> the love doctor. <laughs> like, have you always yeah. been that person amongst your friends who, who gives relationship advice and that's what you brought to social media? I don't think I have. I've just always been the guy that, turns everything into a joke mm -hmm. but giving advice at the same time you know what i mean and like spitting facts and whatever so i can't remember being that guy mm -hmm. but i probably was i wouldn't know mm -hmm. and how that even came about is when i made the first video i was actually going through something with my wife then girlfriend mm -hmm. you know and we had like a huge fight i think we even broke up at the time and i remember thinking to myself i'm like you know what i may not be good at relationshiping but i probably give great advice <laughs> <laughs> says the person who's not in a relationship <laughs> you know what i mean so i put that and the, and the weird thing about that first video is that nobody actually participated mm. i sent those questions in myself you know because i was like oh nobody's participating i'm not gonna go down like this yeah. you know <laughs> let me send in my own questions you know <laughs> so that happened and then immediately second video i got flooded with questions you know mm -hmm. and i think what got people was that reaction because it's not mm. like i practice the answer or anything yes. you get what you get is my immediate re if i'm shocked i'm i'm shocked with you you yes. know what I mean? the person who's scrolling through those stories yeah mm. so it, it really wasn't a tough conversation to have with my parents yeah mm. what's the the worst situation that you ever had to deal with in terms of people submitting questions yo 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 we i've had quite a few mm. <laughs> i've had quite a few i think the 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 worst one was actually definitely the biggest scare because the let me be Gorsi name came from um you know a famous person obviously yes, Wilson Bean Gorsi. Yeah. i used to play a lot of r&b you know and imitate his voice <laughs> I'd be like, welcome to an ovip <laughs> you know i'd be imitating that voice and that's why i was like oh let me be Gorsi. um and then the one night while we we're having a live because i used to go live a lot mm. uh with like people that follow me on instagram and we just have fun and bent and talk relationships and the one time this lady came on and she's covering her face and her hands and everything. Sure. So I'm like, Ugh, you know, people, like, sometimes they want to be anonymous. So mm. it's whatever. Then she starts talking about how she cast a spell on Whoa. her sugar daddy who lives in Australia, who now wants to divorce the wife and leave the kids and move to South Africa and move with her. But that's not what she wanted because all she really wanted was the money. And then she started the showing us, yeah, she started showing us all the voodoo stuff. There's like a bottle with blood in their picture and both their hair. So it got weird really quickly, you know. And, oh. I, and naturally you think, ah, this is just, you know what I mean. But that made me realize that even with the questions, no matter how radical mm. they may sound, people are actually going through a lot. Like, and they're genuinely looking for they're advice. They're genuinely looking for advice. I think the difference with the advice that I gave, mm. that it came with hard reality 
but with laughter at the same time. You know, I guess that's where people found the comfort of, you know, coming out and telling me their stories on the Q&As and on the live. And, you know, the Lemmy Binkosi literally came from me trying to mock uh, Wilson Binkosi, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, that's how that came about. Amazing. Now, the switch from being this individual that gives relationship advice yeah. on social media yeah, yeah. to you now moving into the traditional media space, yeah. being on TV, being on radio. Yeah. How did you find that switch? Because I'm sure it's two completely yeah. different fields. It was completely... Um, like a shock to the system, you know, because contrary to popular belief, I'm a very shy guy, you know. Lemmy Loco is outgoing <laughs> and you know what I mean? But Mulemo, Mulemo is yeah. like, I'm very reserved. I'm that guy who spends uh, their free days at home playing PlayStation, playing FIFA, wow. playing, you know, Call of Duty and all that stuff. Um, if I do go out, it has to be with the guys I grew up with. You know, that's why I feel safest. Or if I'm going to a DJ gig or whatever, I have to go with those guys because I feel like I don't fit in in like these celebrity. Even now, it mm. feels like I, I don't fit in with like these celebrity circles and whatever. It's so weird when I see somebody who I deem a celebrity yeah. and they recognize like, hey, man, we love your work. And I'm like, oh, this guy, <laughs> this guy knows you. This guy knows me. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so it was a big shock to the system. Mm. And I think there were definitely a lot of things in my life that happened that kind of made that transition a bit of a soft landing because, like I said, I started with pre like training for TV presenting in primary school. In high school, I did theater and dance. And then um, while, while I'm sitting in my own room, right, and for the longest time, I always imagined myself in front of an audience. But whenever you step in front of the audience or a camera, mm. you become like super nervous. So the transition from like just doing TikToks in my own little room and going on to TV was kind of like a soft landing because I remember as it gradually started, for some odd reason, brands started trusting me with TV ads. Mm. I had no experience whatsoever. You know, I went from shooting a TikTok, they're talking to myself, to, hey, there's a call sheet. Yo, there's a call time. Hey, what's <laughs> this? You know, because I remember the first time I heard call sheet, I'm like, what, what on God's earth is a call sheet? <laughs> you know, so, so there's certain things that started happening that kind of like prepared me for the time where I eventually ended up on TV. Because I remember one of those things was a friend of mine who works in advertising and he wanted to start a YouTube show and he was so professional with how he operated. That was the first time I got introduced to call times and call sheets and all of that stuff. So I started understanding it at a smaller scale and that taught me um, etiquette and behavior and punctuality and all those other things leading up to TV. So it became a little easier by the time I got to TV but it, it was still nerve wracking mm. you know but it, it became a little easier definitely yeah. let's talk about brands I mean when yeah. you go through your profile there are several brands hey. that you've worked with you now mentioned yeah. it almost like being surprised that yeah. brands want to work with you yeah, yeah. and a lot of content creators yeah. in 2023 they want to build a solid following yeah. and then translate the following into money which yeah. means working with brands, with brands yeah. how did that opportunity come for you or how did you create that because i'm sure there's somebody out there yeah. saying that's what i want i yeah. want to do that as well yeah i think it, it 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 goes um it speaks to how much you want it mm. and how much you're willing to respect the industry i think that's not taught to content creators specifically you need to respect the industry because when that happened the first time, it was a big alcohol brand, mm. but I'm sure to them I was just the numbers say, hey, he's got numbers and whatever, let's put them on this campaign for reach, right? But respecting submission times and, you know, opening a line of communication with the brand and saying, hey guys, I know this is the brief. Um, I feel this is um, great, but I'd feel more comfortable kind of tweaking it a little bit and whatever. And it, it makes you more of a, a human than just another number to brands but mm -hmm. respecting that industry it literally goes a long way because that's how they remember you you know the fact that you submit things on time the fact that uh you know you're open to learning from an industry that you have little to no knowledge of 
that's what's most important because I feel like now everybody just just wants to go viral. Yes. If I go viral, <laughs> then the money will come. It's not how if it I works. If I trend, you know, everyone <laughs> if I knows. Trend, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> mm. You know, it, everybody thinks that if you go viral, it'll automatically happen. Mm. There's a lot of work and discipline behind the scenes. You know, so I think I don't know if it's just how I was raised. Or it maybe it's something that I learned. You know, if you're hungry for something, the first thing you have to be willing to do is willing to respect and learn. So I think that's the number one thing that everybody needs to understand. And the third thing would probably be patience. Because like I said, people think, hey, 2020, this guy made one video and he yeah. went viral. No, <laughs> it's been happening since 2015. You know, I've yeah. got videos out there somewhere that have got like two likes and 15 <laughs> views. You know? <laughs> you know, but it's been happening for some time. Yeah. But patience, respect and the willingness to learn, man. Definitely. Let's shift the focus to yeah. a big, big passion. Yeah. Something that you get to do for a living now, yeah. which is talk about football. Yeah. I know that you're a massive Manchester United Yo. fan. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. also Orlando Pirates. 100%. Where did the love for football start for you? I actually, hey, I did a lot growing up. Mm. I played football uh, growing up in primary school because, you know, in the in the neighborhood, there were like soccer teams and whatever. And I had this interest because my friends were there and I knew nothing about football, mm. you know, because I never used to watch or whatever, but my friends were there. I was like, I may I want to go where my friends are going. You know, I mean, if they're spending... Tag along. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? If they're spending two, three hours yeah. after school going to training mm. or whatever, I want to join. So I went and joined this team. And I remember when I started off, I started off as a midfielder. My my coach at the time, he was like, hey, dude, uh, I think you're good as a midfielder. But as, as like a defensive man, I've, I had no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> defensive? What? What's I didn't know the on? position. I don't know the position. It's like, yeah, I, I, <laughs> you, I think you could play like a six. You know, I, yeah. I was like, hey, what's this guy talking about? You know? So then he said to me, I need you to go watch a team called Manchester United ah. and take lessons from a guy called David Beckham. So that's where the support for Manchester United started because I then supported United because of... um that mm. that one sentence that my coach said to me because i'm sitting there when we used to watch those games on etv and they were playing <laughs> like two hours later than the actual match <laughs> i you remember know? those days <laughs> you know what i mean so so that's how it started pirates is because it's influenced from friends as well around about the same time when friends like yeah i've been on favorite case achieves hey man i'm favorite pirates yeah. you know but pirates had that thing that was just mm. calling me i was like ah oh, man yeah me i think i fit <laughs> in with pirates you see you yourself know? in the black jersey exactly you know what i mean <laughs> So so that's how the love for football started. Mm. And then I started following football like that. And, you know, um, I actually also support Real Madrid. And that was because of David Beckham. Mm. When he left Man United. So you moved went, with him. I moved with <laughs> him. And it introduced me. How oh, there's football in Spain. Again, yeah. hey, there's so much football, you know. So that's how I started supporting Real Madrid as well. So that that passion kind of all came to me unexpected because I played football for, for a number of years at that time uh, until I was just like tired. I'm like, ah, no, you know, I, now I want to be on TV. You know? I want to go, <laughs> I want to go on TV. You know? mm, yeah. I want to do other stuff. I want to do other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about United for, yeah. for a second because yeah. I'm a massive Manchester United fan yeah. as well. Yeah. Eric Ten Hag is the man at the, at the helm at the moment. Man, man, Things man. Are, are looking good for United. We yeah. know what happened with all the other coaches yeah. since <laughs> Sir Fergie left. It, it, it's okay. Yeah, it's we been don't a have tough to, time. Yeah, yeah, we don't have to talk about that. Yeah. That's not the focus. Yeah. yeah. But, I want to get your view on United at the moment. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're playing great football. Yeah. Players like Marcus Rashford are, are finding their form. Yeah. Could we see Manchester United maybe next season or the season oh, they after move back to the team that we know yeah. them to be? I and feel, why do you think so? I feel 100% we could do that because we already see the quality now, mm. right? You could see two seasons ago and prior, even last season before yeah. Ten Hag uh, walked in. You'd watch a Man United game and you were nervous. Yes. And you're like, <laughs> I hope we don't lose by more than two goals yeah. or you know what I mean. But now you watch the boys and you're like, 3-0. We could take this clean 3-0. We're very competitive. Mm. We're solid. We're more confident with the squad that we've got right now. Mm. But I think we still need squad depth, okay. you know, because we've got guys, we've, we, we've got our most injuries now since Ten Hag took over and we're a bit nervous. You know, we're playing... Uh, Europa League with these mm. injuries and you're thinking, oh, damn, we don't have Rashford. Yeah. Oh, damn, we don't have, you know, when, when Ericsson was injured, we were shaking, you know, that's why we got Sabitza on loan as well. So I feel like in the next season or two, 
with Ten Hag as coach, mm. we could definitely go back to our glory days, you know, because... Like winning the league, like that 100%, standard. 100%. 100%. Mm. I, th- I feel like we were competitive this season. We just dropped points at the, at the wrong time, you know, to the wrong people. Mm. You know, we, there's no way we could be catching 7-0 losses to Liverpool. There's no way we, we should be catching... 4-0 losses to like Brentfords and Brightons, you know what I mean? So uh, I, I, I get that we could have had a solid chance of competing for the league this season. Mm-hmm. And any anyone who follows Man United religiously could attest to that, you know. But I think I always joke to my friends and say, yo, our football Lord and Savior, Ten Hag, you know? <laughs> Lord and Savior. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because <laughs> ever since Fergie left, it's been a yeah. shaky road. I actually saw an interesting stat the other day that um, he's just clocked 50 games with United. And in the compared to the last coaches, mm. in the first 50 games, he's got the best stats. He's got like a 70% win rate where everybody else was at a, like a 46. Um, Van Gaal was at like a 47, I think. Oh. You know, so mm. he's at a, at a 70. You know, um, Mourinho was at a, I think he was the highest with like 56 or 58% win rate. Ten Hag in his first 50 games compared to everybody else mm. is on 70. So there's no, there's no reason for us to believe, you know, given another transfer season, because mm-hmm. he's only had one. Yes. Given another transfer season, mm. uh, he could, because we've seen that he makes the right buys. Yes. You know, we we thought, ah, Martinez, what is he doing with <laughs> that guy at <laughs> center We were back? all shocked, yeah. We were all shocked. And now he's... Christian yeah. Eriksen. I was, I was mad at the Eriksen buy because I was like... We're playing with somebody with a with the pacemaker. You know how are we going to buy a Gotta guy with get the, a proper player? You know what I mean. <laughs> but you know, needless to say, this He's is a great. man who died on the pitch and rose again rose again the phoenix <laughs> you know rose what I mean? from the ashes rose from the ashes yeah. and he's proving to be great you know anthony i'm still not convinced so mm. much um i feel like he he is slowly easing into ten hogs style of play mm. and being a team player more than anything else you know because i think he's very selfish but i think definitely in the next in the next season or two with Ten Hag um, as coach, mm-hmm. we could definitely take the league. Okay. Last United question, right? Because yeah, yeah. I know that some <laughs> people might get annoyed, right? Yeah. Last United question. Yeah. Is the Carabao Cup mm. a Mickey Mouse trophy for why a team it, like United? Why is it a Mickey Mouse trophy when we win it? <laughs> a lot know, of people don't respect that Liverpool trophy. Liverpool won it last season. It, nobody was talking about it. You won a, a Tin Cup trophy. You a know what I mean? So no, it, it's, a trophy mm. is a trophy. Yeah. We, everybody... A lot of other people were competing in that. Yeah. Man City was competing in that. Had they won, nobody would have said yes. that oh, it's a it's a Mickey Mouse trophy. Mm. Liverpool won it the season before. Mm. Um every a lot of people were competing for it, you know. So a competition is a competition and a trophy is a trophy. Yeah, a trophy. Yeah. Especially when it's your first one in six years. Exactly. The last time we won a trophy was in twenty seventeen. So we'll take it. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll take, take it. it. We'll take it. Let's talk about what we want to see from South African football. Hey. Because there's a lot of football fans, specifically in South Africa, yeah. like you and I. Yeah. We get incredibly excited yeah. when we talk about English football, yeah. Spanish football. Yeah. But when it comes to our own league, mm. we don't get so excited. I mean, we'll watch the derby, Orlando Pirates versus Kaiser Chiefs. Mm-hmm. But when Supersport United is playing Maru Mokalans, yeah. we don't even watch the game. We don't even attend. Yeah. What's the issue with South African football? Bro, I'll be frank with it. And I might just get into trouble for saying this. Mm-hmm. But I think it's mismanagement. True. I think it's mismanagement, especially in a financial aspect, because... For example, I was chatting to a friend of mine watching the varsity, the rugby varsity mm-hmm. cup, right? And that is so well managed that it True. gives off like uh, college football in America. Yes. That's how well managed it is. Mm-hmm. That's a multi million rand industry on its own. And how is that managed better than our number one, division one? Professional football. Football Professional league. football. Yeah. You know, so I, it speaks to a lot of mismanagement from um, a you know, from the association's level to club level and all of that, because first and foremost, there's no reason why we shouldn't be having things like VAR. I understand it's because a lot of a lot of teams, I mean, speaking of mismanagement, a lot of teams don't actually own stadiums. That's why yeah. we don't have VAR in, in, in South African football, you know. But teams should have their stadium. To have a stadium, you need to maintain it and manage it properly. To manage it properly, you need to manage the finances properly. To manage finances properly, you need to be competing at the best level. You need to be buying the the best players. You need to be having the best training facilities. So 
the things like the Premier League and, and La Liga have gotten themselves in a position where money, you make money from attendance. You get attendance from quality football. You get quality football from quality players. Mm -hmm. You get quality players from good development and good Structure, buys. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's a whole chain. It's a domino effect of things that went wrong back then, whenever they went wrong, mm. that's now showing. You know, that's why teams like Sundowns can turn our league into a farmer's league. Yo. You know, because they're putting money in the right places. They're yeah. buying the players. As soon as we, we're always complaining like, ah, as soon as a player is hot for one season, Sundowns takes mm -hmm. him. That's what teams do in in the in if you look at the EPL if if there's a a Champions League that's happening clubs are scouting yes. if there's a World Cup that's happening clubs are scouting if, the, if any kind of tournament uh, on a country level there's scouts sitting there saying hey who, who what is what team does this guy play for okay he's good i think that's what the mm. team needs you know what i mean mm. so Rumor has it, I don't know. Oh, apparently, dropping allegedly, rumors. Apparently, allegedly. Speculations. Let's go. <laughs> Let me be listening. The, the scouting process in South Africa has become so corrupt. Oh, right? okay. Um, I don't know how true that is, mm. but if it is true, that's probably what's killing yeah. like our football. That we're not taking guys on merit and 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 talent. We're taking them because it's what what Spanban's child or mm. A, a rich parent that could afford to pay 20,000 to the scout, you know, I mean, that doesn't help because yeah. by the time we get to uh, the, the the division one to the premier league, we're like, okay, we've got the best from the worst crop. So it's like, Hey dude, are we really putting the right resources to cultivate the premier league? Cause we've got talented players that nice. are currently in the league. I had a conversation with uh, Lala just a couple of days mm -hmm. ago and he was saying that now for you to become at that level in South Africa, it's it's a whole lot more self-discipline than it is support from the clubs. Sure. You know what I mean? Because now you have to be that guy saying, hey, I mustn't squander my money. Mm. Hey, I must get to training on time. Hey, I must be the first at training and the last to leave. So it, it's more on you than it is support that's given. There's very few clubs that do that. I think maybe the biggest teams in the league do that. You know, but Maybe the others, not so much. The story of Jomo Cosmos tells hey. you everything you need to know, you know, because they apparently, allegedly, again, mm. made more money from dropping out of the league and going back in, dropping out, getting back in, than it would be for them just staying in the Premier League because it would cost so much, you know? So there's things like that when you, that you have to consider that are we actually putting the right structures in place to make these teams successful. Mm. You see it in Sundowns. It seems like that's being done well. You see it in teams like Chiefs and Pirates. That's apparently being done well. Mm. Cape Town City is another one that's looking like it's a solid team and got solid structures in place. But is that happening for the other 10, teams, 12 teams yeah. that are in the league? You know, It's almost like we've got other teams just to fill up the league. But the guys we really want to watch, we know who they are. Exactly. You know? Yeah. The history of... South African football yeah. is there's, there's a big question mark when mm -hmm. it comes to that and the story of Vitz yeah. you know yeah. a club that was 99 years old yeah. and was bought and then changed into another club yeah. not that I'm taking away from yeah. the club that bought them yeah. I want to shine a spotlight on the fact that the history of the club is gone yeah. what is what, what are your thoughts on that because to me I feel when you talk about the history of Manchester United, yeah. we can go back into the history books, yeah. into the archives, and we have yeah. the database. Yeah, yeah. But now in South African football, we're just selling clubs for, for the money. And we forget bro. about the history and the legacy. Because if you if you think about it, that seldom happens in a Premier League, you know. No way, You've got yeah. clubs that are playing in 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 the in the EFL that are probably older than some clubs that are playing in the Premier League. Agreed. You know? You look at a club like uh, Blackburn Rovers and they've got such a rich history. We banter and say, you know, City has no supporters because, I mean, where are all these? <laughs> but they've got a rich history. You know, you, you look at all these other clubs, man. Like, you go to the second division of the Premier League and stadiums are still full. Yes. You know, because of Teams that. Teams are well supported. Exactly. Yeah. Because of the rich history. You know, because when you think of London, there's clubs that represent a certain side of London and another side of London. And, you know, it's all a rich history. So what does that say to us sort of like erasing 
because uh, if you change a name, you, you erase the history. Yes. You know, we saw it happen to especially when you Celtics Especially as well. when you move the, the club. 100%. 100%. We saw it happen to, um, what's this, Bloomfontail Celtics. Mm-hmm. Um, they sold, got changed to something else. It was a huge speculation. Not even speculation, like a, like they a unhappiness from yeah. the fans, you know, because they felt like they were sold like a loaf of bread, mm-hmm. you know, and now they've got no team to support. Um, interestingly enough, when Makufe Cup happened, the Bloemfontein Celtic supporters and Bloemfontein residents decided to have their own little, like, shebang somewhere else because they were like, we're not supporting that. We don't have a team that plays in there. Whoa. This is traditionally something for Bloemfontein Celtics, Celtics and for Bloemfontein as a as an area. So you've now erased the history of the club, not not bearing in mind that you're disconnecting with the fans, you're, you, you've you got disgruntled fans and, you know, it kind of, it dents the league overall mm. because the history, man, you know what I mean? That's we a, grew up important. seeing, hey, Punya Sele Sele, you know what I mean? Like those guys were, mm. they were one of the most competitive guys, but again, mismanagement because what reason do you have to sell a team? Definitely. You know? Sure. Hopefully these issues get uh, resolved yeah, by yeah, the yeah. relevant stakeholders. No, to, in, to, 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 to also just say, I think we are moving towards the right direction. Mm-hmm. You know? I see um, guys like Dr. Petrus Mutsepa and Dr. Ivan Koza, all of them banding together and constantly working on developing the league, you know? Mm-hmm. But we can't rely on the big teams to fix the whole league. Yes. I think from a management level, in club level, everybody needs to kind of like pull their weight, mm. you know? So we can't depend on three, four individuals to kind of like... Carry fit, the rest carry, of the pack. Exactly, you know? So everybody from a club level, let's go back to scouting for the right reasons. Let's go because that's how you then create a second division that wants to be part of, you know, the first division and thus having that... Uh, become a bigger culture across the board. Mm, yeah, definitely. And I'm sure, as you mentioned now, that they are working on these issues. Yeah, and hopefully, yeah. at some point, at least in our generation, yeah. we can go back to the glory days yeah. where watching South African football yeah. is a thing. Yeah. It's great to talk about Chelsea and United yeah. and all of these other clubs, but yeah. there's a certain special feeling yeah. when you talk about your own team hey, in your man. backyard, hey. going to the stadium. I got kicked out know? of the stadium for wearing a Pirates jersey, but that's a story for <laughs> another day you know but i mean i i'm not gonna fold man yeah. once and always you know what they say absolutely <laughs> beautiful let's move on to the evolution yeah. of lemmy loco yeah, yeah stand-up comedy yeah. i believe that's the next thing for you yeah 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 the funny thing is is that dream is what fuels all of this mm. you know the reason why i chose to do comedy skits and you know just try to be funny and want to reach out to an audience is because the dream was always stand-up comedy because I was obsessed with it from a very young age. I'm like, because, you know, laughter is such an involuntary action, yeah. right? I can't force you to laugh, you know? But if I say something that's really unexpected and you think that is hilarious, mm. you know, it's such an involuntary action and I feel that's like a talent on its own. So I was so obsessed with stand-up comedy and I'm like, these guys can... You're hooked for an hour. Literally, All this person yeah. is doing is talking. They're not dancing. They're, it's not magic tricks. It's not whatever. All he's doing is standing there talking. And for that hour, for that set, you forget about everything else, mm. you know? And the guys that are super talented in what they do, they touch on real issues. Um, they make you think about the most pressing issues with a sense of humor, mm. you know? You're, the guys like your... your, your um, Look, the names just ran away now. <laughs> mm. But your Dave Chappelle's, your oh, Chris Tra- Rock, Trevor as well. You know, there? Trevor's one of mm-hmm. them as well. He used to talk a lot about like essay politics, mm. but throw some humor in it. And I think that's where the formula kind of formulated itself when it comes to me mm. talking about relationships, something that everybody's probably got issues with or has had an issue with, but in a with a comedic spin to it. So stand up comedy was always the dream. And I think all of this has just led me to that point to finally say, hey, look, I eventually, I, I now have reached a point where I really want to do it. Shout out to the brand that I've been working with recently <laughs> because they actually gave me the first platform. You know, mm. we, were, we were at this launch and they had comedians sort of like emceeing the thing. And I just wanted to learn. And I raised mm. my hand up. And I'm like, so for somebody like me who's in content creation space, 
where's the best uh, like what's the best place or what's the best starting point mm. for me to go into stand up comedy and they said right here right now sure. and handed me the mic you know and I was sitting in the audience and I'm like oh but from what I've learned from my mm. content creation journey there's only right here and right now yeah so I wasn't gonna fold I wasn't gonna pass up the opportunity and I got up on that stage and shout out Nina Hasty. she walked me through how to open up a stand-up comedy set. And right there, I did an impromptu set. And, you know, everybody was happy. And I was like, you know what? If this is not a sign, I don't know what is. And that's how I got into that. So the brand I'm working with now has actually put together sort of like a young tour. Okay. You know? Yeah, yeah. So I did a young tour in the past month. Okay. Uh, doing stand-up comedy. And yeah, yeah I'm, 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 I want to go commercial with it now. Yeah. Definitely. And given your success over the last few years, I'm sure that you'll you'll do quite well. I hope so. I hope nah, so. Because just now I get on the stage and they're like, ah, this guy, what is he doing? Nah, now? don't worry. I think, I yeah. think you've got it. But to wrap up the conversation, yeah. you're a young man who had experience as a child, like acting, mm. performing. You turned that love into skits on yeah. social media from 2015. Lockdown was yeah. the time when it peaked. Yeah. A lot of people want to create content. Yeah. You know, they might not have the training that you had as a yeah. young man. They might not have thousands of, of followers. Yeah. But they want to stand out. Yeah. They want to have a voice in yeah. all this clutter yeah. of, of social media. Not everybody has the opportunity to be on TV, yeah. to be on radio, but we all have a smartphone and we can yeah. all talk to the world in yeah. essence. But I also want to stand out. Yeah. What advice would you give to them? Be genuine. Mm. I think one thing that worked for me is that, um, and I know a lot of people are not going to like hearing this, mm. but stay off the trends. Mm. You know what I mean? Because... You jump onto a trend, that's what everybody's doing. How are you going to stand out from something that everybody's doing, you know? I did uh, relationship advice when we were all going through a lot. Yeah. Because, you know, some relationships didn't make it past lockdown, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, but it was because I don't think there was anybody else doing something like that, yeah. you know? Be genuine. Like, be authentic. Because um, it's hard to be something you're not when you're being yourself. You know, so if so. if if you find something that you love, put your 10,000 hours in that, uh, work on your craft, learn from other people who are doing the same because I used to binge guys like uh, King Bash when they were still on Vine. You know, I followed him all the way to TikTok. When I find funny content creators, I follow those guys and binge on their content because... That's my way of kind of like sharpening my craft. Mm. So you're not going to stand out from doing all the latest trends because like I said earlier, everybody just wants to go viral. Yeah, It's not about going viral. It's about mastering your craft, you know, and finding a way. If I could put it, um, if I could use stand-up comedy as an example, right? So I've got well over 70 DVDs of stand-up comedy that I've kind of like collected through the years and like sure. referrals from like cousins and stuff like, hey, I think you'd like this and whatever. And with that being said, if you're trying to put together or find your identity as a stand-up comedian, which I'm doing right now, is you watch a whole lot of stand-up comedians and you start automatically gravitating to the ones you like and you learn a bit from everyone. But then if you're the kind of person that, wants to talk about political issues and mm -hmm. but throw some comedy in it and send a message across, you gravitate towards those guys and you kind of learn like, oh, this is how they they build up to a punchline. This is how they build up to like a message and whatever. And that's, it applies the same everywhere. If you were a, a mechanic, you would learn from another mechanic. If you were a baker, you would mm -hmm. want to learn from the best, you know, baker there is you know you want to learn if you're a chef you want to learn from like a gordon ramsay you you binge on their shows and you know try recipes mm -hmm. and stuff it's not different from content creation you sit there and you consume a lot of content you start gravitating to the ones that kind of like make sense and the ones that you like and you start building on that you start experimenting with a lot of uh, content mm -hmm. because we, even when i started out after my first couple of viral videos i started experimenting with a lot of stuff i had something called he say, she say, where I'd like break down lyrics, you know, but <laughs> add a, like a funny spin to it. Mm. I had reenactments of like, uh, of things I've been through before. You try out a lot of things and you start leaning towards what 
works for you mm, what feels natural. and what you're good at yeah what feels natural mm. so my advice is stop trying to force going viral yeah. right because even then you could go we've seen it with tiktok mm. you go viral for one video it gets two million views your very next video is on one thousand views because now you thought ah, i've made it now. i've got it i've got it now mm. you know i'm the guy mm. but it's not how it works you know, you 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 wanna you wanna keep putting in your ten thousand hours on something that you believe in, and keep working on that craft and collab, guys. Like mm-hmm. collab with other creators. It's something I wish, you know, I had the opportunity to do, or I I still wish to have the opportunity mm-hmm. to do, but for some odd reason, it's not happening. You it's know? not happening because they're not saying yes, or a bit of both. You okay. know, I've reached out to a few people, try to collab with them, and I, I think they shrugged it off too early. Because mm-hmm. next thing, boom, out, oh, he's that guy. Yeah, now, you know, yeah. before the viral videos and whatever, I reached out to a couple of guys, and they kind of like shrugged me off. And now I've even reached out mm-hmm. to upcoming content creators, and I was like, "Hey guys, invite me to your YouTube channels. In- invite me mm-hmm. to your podcast. Invite me to." all of that stuff because I want to kind of like pour into their hustles, you know, because who knows, maybe there's a guy that actually, <laughs> funny enough, because he's like a big YouTuber now mm. in SA. Um, damn, I don't even know his real name, but he's he calls himself uh, Zilly Weezy, like something like that. Okay. I, you know, I feel bad because <laughs> <laughs> I don't even, but I met him at, um, I met him at Zone 6 the one time. Like, okay. Maybe six months to a year after my my, my breakthrough, mm. and he came up to me and he's like, "Hey, Khrutman, you know, I just want to thank you because I boomed after doing one of your sounds. That's mm. how I got attention, and 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 mm-hmm. you know, and then he kind of like developed into his own thing. That's got nothing to do with, yes. with any of my sounds or whatever. He's like, he's doing great for himself. He was in Namibia, I think, the one time or Kenya sure. or whatever. Amazing." And it's that, you know what I mean? You, you, we learn, we pick out what we interested in. We collab with other guys. We learn from other guys. I collabed with, um, Robot Boy the one time as I lost all that footage, but the collab in itself built a very great relationship. You can always do it again. You could always Mm. do it again, but you learn from each other and you collab and you know, like, hey guys, drop the the that chip on your shoulder you think you have mm. one viral Being a cool video. Kid. Yeah, yeah, and you know, <laughs> yeah, 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 me, I've got a trending video. It mm. says nothing, bro. Yeah. You know, so so I think pour into your craft, mm. man, and collab, learn from other guys. I'm still learning. I'm learning from guys that came long before me and guys that came long after me. You know, so it's all about just constantly mm. learning, man. Let me loco. Yeah, bro. May you keep constantly learning. Yeah, yeah, Building yeah. <laughs> your craft. And on your new venture, yeah. as you do the stand-up comedy thing, Thank I wish you, you Thank I you, wish man. you well, and I'm certain you'll kill it. Yeah. Just like you killed everything else throughout your journey as well. And we look forward to watching your star rise, my brother. Thanks, brother. Thanks, yeah. brother. And, and you know, Thanks I have to remind well. the kids, homework, guys, homework. <laughs> <laughs> you had to it's say. Some homework. Guys. Do your homework. <laughs> yeah, please, guys. You know, it's, nothing's more important than that yeah. because, yeah. But shout out, man. Thanks for having me. This is fantastic. Uh, and I hope everybody at home enjoys it. This is Five 